Hi, welcome to Next. In this session, I am going to walk you through building a serverless event-driven web app in under 10 minutes. My name is Prashant, and I am a developer advocate with Google Cloud. In the next few minutes, we will look at what an event-driven architecture is and what are the benefits of using serverless. We will then define a sample scenario, which we will design using these principles. Then we will actually build a working application before concluding this session. First, let us look at what is an event-driven architecture and why do we need this? More and more organizations are moving out of monolith application architecture towards microservices, intending to simplify their architecture and reduce the total cost of ownership. However, as the application grows bigger, their request-driven microservice applications starts looking like a spider web of services calling each other. It could end up looking like a decentralized monolith due to the hard buyer dependencies between these services. The application complexity starts increasing and maintaining applications becomes harder and harder with each new service that you add because you need to integrate with both upstream and downstream services. What can we do to simplify the application architecture and move faster? That's where event-driven architecture comes into the picture. This is an architectural pattern which allows your applications or services to communicate with each other asynchronously through the means of events, which typically signify completion of a process. It allows you to scale faster because when you add new services, you don't have to think a lot about your downstream or upstream services, and hence reducing code changes and dependencies. It also avoids performance bottlenecks from slower downstream services as the upstream service can decouple itself from the downstream dependencies by firing an event and forgetting about it. Now that we have seen how an event-driven architecture could help us to build faster, let us look at why serverless. When you manage your own infrastructure, along with building your applications, you will need to handle all the aspects, including the physical aspects of hardware and connectivity to the operational aspects of scaling and managing security. In the serverless or a fully managed environment, you can abstract away the infrastructure and operations aspect, such as managing and provisioning servers. Fully managed also means scalability and scaling down to zero. So when your app has no traffic, you are not charged. You can focus on building and monitoring your business logic while Google manages the infrastructure. What this means is you as a developer can spend more time coding and don't need to spend time managing infrastructure. Some of the benefits you gain by using serverless are accelerate time to market by reducing setup effort and hence increased velocity. Simplicity by enabling developers with easy onboarding and self-service standing up application environments. Ensuring service availability with high elasticity, multi-region deploys, and global load balancing. Reduce risk to your company by moving higher up the stack with built-in security and operations. Let us now pen down a simple use case and see how one could actually use serverless and event-driven architecture to build out an application. This is my sample use case. As a developer, I want to build an application that searches the Twitter public feed for tweets on Verdal attempts calculates the scores, and displays the scores in a publicly available leaderboard web app. For those not familiar with Wordle, which is a free-to-play word game, a typical round is one where I try to guess the hidden word of the day in as few attempts as possible. It is common for players to tweet out the number of attempts that they took to solve a game. It is this tweet that we are looking for, and we will provide a score based on the number of attempts taken. I will then build out the application in this manner. In order to search for the tweets on Twitter, we would have to first authenticate the Twitter APIs and make a free text search query to retrieve the search results. The Twitter API returns the results in batches, so we will need to call the API multiple times and consolidate the results. Since it is a free text search, we'll have to filter relevant results. Essentially, I'm looking for the tweets which have the attempt numbers. We will have to repeat this entire thing periodically to fetch new tweets, calculate scores, and save them to the database. We might want to build a leaderboard in different formats. Example, order by all time top scores or order by best average score per user or show the best scores in each round. As you can see, this started as a straightforward and simple requirement. However, when we start thinking about the moving parts, then we see that the architecture gets a little complex. Enough talk. Let's dive in and build out the sample application and identify which Google Cloud products we will use as we build this out. Let's jump into the Google Cloud Console. So here I am in my Google Cloud Console. 
Let's start by opening up the Cloud Shell editor and taking a look at the source code. Now the first thing that I need to do is hit the search endpoint on Twitter and query for the appropriate search term. Since the search API offers pagination, we need to make multiple API calls and collect the result. To handle authentication on the Twitter API, we make use of Google Cloud Secret Manager where the API keys and secrets are stored. Now that we have called the API and fetched the data that we need, this part of the application is complete. We should save the data that we have and terminate this process. In order to save the data, we will use Cloud Storage, which is a simple and reliable object store. The data can be saved as a JSON file here. One thing to note is that we would like to keep the tweets and the user information separate. And hence, we will save this into two files, one for users and one for tweets. We will also need to maintain state so that we don't fetch the same tweets over and over again. And for this, we need a database. Let's come back to that. This entire process is quite involved since it has to handle authentication, pagination, has to interact with multiple services like Cloud Storage, Secret Manager, database, and so on. We will use Cloud Run to deploy this part of the application. Cloud Run is a serverless container runtime where I can quickly deploy any containerized application so I have written a Docker file for my application, which installs the node dependencies and starts a node server. The other part of the application, which is equally complex, is the leaderboard with that. In this case, I have used Vue.js and Quasar framework to build up the web app. Again, for ease of local development, testing, and deployment, I have built this application into a container. In the Docker file that you see, we have built the Quasar application and we are serving the built web app. We will use Cloud Run for this as well. Finally, before we jump into the deployment of these applications to Cloud Run, we should realize that these services are important parts of the application and might undergo frequent changes and feature additions. To help automate things and make our lives easier as a developer, we can use Cloud Build to set up a serverless CI/CD pipeline. In Cloud Build, we can set up triggers to automate build and deployment. I have a couple of triggers already created for the two Cloud Run services that we just spoke about. I'll go into one of them. With Cloud Build, you can set up triggers where you can listen to events on a source code repository. In this case, I'm listening to pushes to the main branch. You can even trigger a build only when files in a specific folder is changed. I will also be using a Cloud Build YAML to provide the build and deploy instructions. Now that we have set this up, let us take a quick peek at the Cloud Build YAML files that we have been using. Here we have defined multiple steps. From building a Docker image to pushing the image to the Google Artifact registry and then deploying a Cloud Run service using this Docker image. We can see that our Cloud Run services are currently empty and let us manually run the Cloud Build trigger to deploy the to Cloud Run. We will run the trigger on the main branch. This is the fetch tweets service. And we will run the trigger for the web app service as well. Typically, these would run when code push is done to the branches. In this case, I am triggering this manually. Since we want to store the API response as a JSON object for processing later, we can now go into storage buckets and create a couple of buckets. In this case, I already have created two buckets, one for storing the tweets and the other for storing the users. Back to the topic of serverless compute, the next thing we need to do is actually process the tweets and the user data that we saved. These processes are lightweight and have to only read the JSON files, compute scores, and other relevant statistical information and save this data into a database. Cloud functions are ideal for such simple use cases, which move data between a couple of Google Cloud services. We will use a second generation of Cloud functions, which is functions as a service and offers many enhanced capabilities. I have two such functions here. One that will store the username and user related information. The other that will compute scores and save that information. Since we're building out an event driven application, we are using the functions framework. Uh, this is used to define that this function will handle cloud events. The cloud event object will contain useful information about the event itself, which we can then use for further processing. 
Similarly, we also have a couple of APIs that will be called by the web app. The APIs will query our database and return the scores to the web app for display. These are lightweight and we can use cloud functions to run these as well. Since these are APIs or web APIs, we will be using the HTTP trigger. We can quickly deploy the source code that we have here as cloud functions with just a single Google Cloud Functions deploy command. You notice there is no need for any Docker files or containerization here. Just provide Google Cloud the code and it will run. I will now deploy these four cloud functions. So the two APIs and the two functions are going to be deploying in the background. Finally, last but not the least, we have been talking about saving data all this while. The username data, the score data, and some state information in a database. We will use a highly scalable serverless NoSQL document database that is available on Google Cloud and is called Firestore. Firestore lets you store data as JSON-like documents and offers a powerful query engine to fetch and work with the data. We can see here in the data section that the Firestore database is currently empty. As the services begin to write documents into specific collection names, the collections are automatically created. And one piece that we are missing is to actually trigger this whole process periodically. This is where we will use Cloud Scheduler. We have set up a cron job for every five minutes using Cloud Scheduler. Cloud Scheduler uses PubSub as one of the targets and pushes a message to a topic each time the cron job is run. Now that we have all the individual pieces of our application deployed on serverless, all we have to do is wire them up using events. Let's create those figures now. So here I am creating the trigger to fetch the tweets whenever the cron job runs. This will run when the message is published. We can select the topic to listen to. We will select the region where this will run and finally the cloud run service. This is for when Google Cloud Storage raises an event. So when an object is created within a bucket, I also need to specify which bucket. So in this case, let's use tweets and we will store this course. This is the same on a cloud storage, on finalized, on the users bucket and call the store usernames. Awesome. So our event-driven application is now all wired up and ready to go. We just have to wait for the magic to happen. I'll get it kicked off by manually triggering a cron run. Let's resume this cron job, which I had paused until now. But we don't need to wait for the next run. We can immediately force a job run to see that everything is working fine. Meanwhile, I will go into Cloud Run and check that all our services are correctly deployed. Two of them got deployed through Cloud Build and the other four we deployed through scripts. Let's go into the user bucket. And we see that the user JSON file has just been created. Since the file has been created on the bucket, the next event will be triggered. And here we have the tweet JSON as well. Since this has been created, the events will now be sent to the two cloud functions that we have, which will process these files and then save the data into Firestore. To check that it's happening, we can quickly refresh Firestore itself. And we see that data is being populated. We have both the stores information, the scores information, as well as the user information. This data will be retrieved by the APIs and will be displayed on the leaderboard. Let's go into the Cloud Run Services, the leaderboard app, and get the public URL to this app. And there you have it. We have the leaderboard. We have the top 10 scores. 
we also are able to see per round scores. So with that, we have built a ready to use web application with all the related backend and uh, backend services and applications. This brings me to the end of the demo. Let us jump back to the slides. All right, and here we are. We had a look at the demo that we just built out. To recap the main components of what we just built in our demo, we had used a couple of services that were heavy on business logic and we used Cloud Run for them. One of them was a background batch process, which had to take care of authentication, pagination, managing states, etc. We built that out as a containerized application and used Cloud Build to deploy and manage its lifecycle. The other one was a web app, which had the server side and client side dependencies. And it was easy to build that out as a container and deploy to Cloud Run. Then we had a few pieces of code that had to only move data from object store to document store or query data from the document store whenever the web app requested for it. These were services with simple business logic that needed to run only on demand. We used cloud functions for these cases. Cloud storage was a simple and effective solution for storing the JSON data, especially since it emits an event whenever a new object is created. This allows us to build reactive applications. Cloud Firestore is a highly scalable serverless NoSQL document database with advanced query capabilities and fit the requirement to store and retrieve scores and maintain state for the application. Finally, EventArc helped us to easily wire the entire application together. It is able to listen to events from upstream services and trigger relevant downstream services whenever needed without us having to write subscribers and message handling logic. What application developers want is to develop and deploy modern, highly scalable cloud native applications as quickly as possible with the least effort on setting up and managing infrastructure. To achieve this, we have used serverless compute, serverless databases, and orchestration, uh, and, and an event orchestration solution. Cloud Run lets you retain the flexibility to use containers to package and deploy code and its dependencies while completely freeing you from having to do any infrastructure or cluster management that is required in containerized workflows. Cloud Functions lets you focus on writing the code to connect with services. Google will take care of running it, scaling it up or down, and serving users on a global scale. All this can be managed using Cloud Build, which is a serverless CI/CD platform, which enables very fast builds on high CPU VMs and automates your deployments. We use a serverless document database, Firestore, which is able to scale up or down on demand. With its powerful query engine and support for many popular languages, Firestore allows one to easily integrate it into their applications. Finally, EventArc allows you to easily build event-driven architectures without having to implement, customize, or maintain the underlying infrastructure. With reliable delivery and taking the effort out of having to manage pop sub subscriptions, EventArc allows you to develop applications faster. Where do you go from here? Here are a couple of core labs on event-driven orchestration and serverless that you can run at your own pace and get hands-on with Google Cloud. Thank you for joining me. Have a great next 22.